Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First. I'm back home. Woo! It's been a fantastic whirlwind week. Family went on vacation. Uh, we also were with our family uh, in the loss of my wife's uh, grandfather. Uh, so continue to be praying for them, for Glenda and Randy and Angie. Uh, as they uh, deal with the loss of their father. And you guys have been praying for us and taking care of us, and we appreciate you all so, so much. Hashtag pray first. If you're wondering what in the world is pray first and who in the world am I, pray first is something we do Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. That's become much more important nowadays since we're kind of all over the place. Uh, but we believe that we should put God first, that God deserves and requires that we give him our first before we answer our phone, before we check our email, before we check our messages, uh, before we look at social media. When we wake up in the morning, we believe that we should talk to God first and give him our first, the first of our time, our talents, and our treasure. And we also understand that not everybody believes that way, so we respect how you feel about things, but we want you to know this, even if you don't believe in our God, the principles found in our uh, our teachings and in God's teachings uh, will work for your life. So everybody, hi guys. Woo! Ah, man, it felt good to be at home and in my bed last night, even though I love traveling. Listen, if you're first time, put hashtag first time. If you're live, hashtag live. Hashtag pre-recorded. If you're watching this later, weeks, months, tonight, whatever, hashtag pre-recorded, hashtag live, hashtag shared. And let's get into today's uh, discussion because we're talking about God has a dream for your life. I want you to understand something. God has a dream for your life and God has a destiny for your life. And those two things are different. God gave Joseph a dream at 17 years old to motivate him and to reveal what was in his heart. But Joseph did not step into his destiny at 17 years old. He didn't do that till much later in his 30s. And then he finally started really fulfilling his destiny in his 40s. What happens between the dream and the destiny, 17 and 40s, is the 10 tests of destiny testing your character. Because most people live with a dream in their heart, but they never walk in their destiny. And I want you to walk in your destiny. I want to walk in my destiny because it's what God has for me. It's his perfect plan for me. It's his will for me. And it's his will for you. It's his perfect plan for you. And it's not too late for you to walk in his destiny. But there's one thing that will stop you, and that's if your character will not support your destiny. That's the one thing that will stop you. Most people live with a dream rather than walk into destiny because their character will not support their destiny. And we've talked about the pride test in Joseph's life. He had a big mouth. He wore his little shiny coat around to show everybody who he was. And we talked about there's a difference in confidence and conceit. Conceit is your need that everyone else know who you are. Confidence is that you yourself know who you are. And that big mouth got him in trouble, so he failed the pride test, which landed him in the pit test. And he was able to sit there and blame everybody for throwing him in the pit. Some of you are in a pit, been in a pit, will be in a pit. Don't sit there and worry about who or what threw you in the pit. Think about getting out of the pit. People and circumstances can throw you in a pit, but if you stay in a pit, that's on you. Then we talked about the palace test. We talked about the fact that he was elevated and he was given this opportunity and in that palace test, there were some things he had to pass. Go back on my page and watch all of those because now we're talking about the purity test and how immorality or impurity in your life, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, those things of the flesh will affect your family, your family. Remember, David, King David fell in one chapter, in, the very, in chapter 11, and in chapter 12, King David's children fell, and I believe it's because he was blinded to the attack on his children's life because he suffered from the same immorality they had. It will affect your children. We talked about a transgression. That is the outward movement of sin. We talked about iniquity, the inward motivation of sin, the thing that causes people to sin. And the iniquity, not the transgression of the father, is passed to the third and fourth generation. And that affects your family. Listen, impurity, uh, immorality will affect your faith because you'll begin to lie to cover up your immorality. You'll begin to deceive people about your immorality. You'll begin to manipulate people to join your immorality. Lying, deception, and uh, manipulation will all begin to grow in your life because you have fertilized it with immorality. So it begins to affect your faith. It'll also affect your future. 
Listen, immorality will affect your future. Now, before I go any further, I need every person to understand something. You may think you're alone struggling with immorality, lust, addictions uh, to different things. Guys, let me tell you something right now before we go any further. Everyone struggles with this at some level, at some point in their life. Either they have struggled, they are struggling, or they will struggle, or they continue to struggle. Now, I want you to do something right now to kind of make everybody in the room understand that they're not alone. I want to ask a very poignant question. I'm going to be the first to answer, so let me just go ahead and say this while you're looking at my face and me speaking these words. I have struggled with lust in my life. I have struggled. I have struggled with these eyes and that, that feeling and that need, and I've struggled with in the past thinking that I could never, ever escape it or break free. So here's my question. If you would be honest today and you would let the people in the room know that they're not alone, because listen, I know they're not alone. I've talked to enough people to know how many people struggle with this stuff. If you will let them know they're not alone, hit the, hit the thumbs button. Hit the thumbs button and let them know, hey, I've struggled in this area too. You are not alone. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. I want you to hit them hard and hit them fast. Go, 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 go. Let them know they're not alone. Now, another thing I want you to do is I want you to be honest with yourself because struggling with immorality, struggling with... Uh, with lust, you know, what did Joseph refer to immorality and lust as and adultery? He referred to it as a great wickedness. It is a great wickedness. Hashtag great wickedness. Now, since you're hashtagging great wickedness and we've all just kind of, uh, what do we do? We just kind of confess that we have dealt with and struggled with that sin area in our life uh, and that we're not alone. Welcome to Pray First. If you're a first-time person here, uh, we don't generally talk about things quite this deep, but it matters, uh, and we talk about different areas, so nothing's off limits here. How about our Pray First family welcome all the first-timers who stayed through that part of this, uh, this morning's talk, because if you're still here, we really appreciate it. Hit some hearts and likes and tell all our first-time viewers, hello, 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 hello. Now, listen. Here's how it will affect your future. Here's how immorality, impurity, uh, uh, all these things will affect your future. Because this is the purity test. Impurity will affect your future. Satan, I guarantee you, went to Joseph and told Joseph that he would never fulfill the dream that God had given him in his life. And here's why. He probably whispered in Joseph's ear or screamed into his heart you're a slave, Joseph. Your brothers sold you into slavery. Your brothers thwarted God's will for your life. Come here. I need to speak this crystal clearly to you. No one can thwart God's will for your life but you. Not your brothers, not your circumstances, not people and not circumstances. People and circumstances can throw you in a pit, but if you stay there, that's on you. Now listen to me. No one can thwart God's plan for your life but you. This is important. There is only one person in the world who can thwart God's plan for your life, and that is you. Now come here. This is absolutely not to say that if you have fallen in an area an area that you struggle in, if you have fallen in an area that you struggle in, that does not mean that you will never fulfill your destiny. Listen to me. That does not mean, if you have fallen in an area, that does not mean you can't fulfill the destiny that God has for your life. If you've fallen in an area, that does not mean that you cannot or that you will not walk in the destiny that God has for you. Because God is a God of forgiveness. God is a God of grace. God is a God of mercy. And more importantly than all, God is a God of forgiveness and restoration. God will forgive you. He will restore you. He will do it today. He will do it right now. There is nothing that can stop you but you, not Satan, not your addiction, not what has power over you, not your oppression, not your oppressor. There is nothing that can stop you but you. You confess your sins to God. He is faithful and just. Forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and put you back on the path towards your destiny. Come on now, but listen to me, listen to me. If you continue to fall in that area, see there's a difference in asking forgiveness and repentance. If you continue to fall in an area, 
your character will not support your destiny. And God will protect you from your destiny because your destiny will crush you. But you will live in an unsatisfied life, struggling, 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 because you think there's no victory in you. Now, what's the answer? What is the answer? Impurity, listen to me, what's the answer? If you struggle with this, if you struggle with, with the issues going on in your life, impurity, come here, come here, come here. Impurity does not begin in the heart. Impurity begins in the eyes. Are you listening to me? Impurity begins in the eyes. Genesis chapter 39, verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife, remember Joseph's master's wife or Potiphar's wife, his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph and said to him, Come lie with me. What was she fueling her inner lust with? She cast longing eyes on Joseph because Joseph was handsome. Impurity does not begin in the heart. It begins in the eyes. Write this down. Impurity begins in the eyes. Hashtag eyes. Hashtag, hashtag, double, double, hashtag. Impurity begins in the eyes. So what's the solution? What's the answer to impurity, to lust, uh, to the addictions, to the, uh, uh, to the physical lust, that the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes? What's the answer? This is going to sound too simplistic, but it's two words. It's two words. It is the solution. It is the answer. It is the victory for your life. It is two words. Don't look. Hashtag. <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but I am telling you from a person who has struggled in the past, don't look. I'm telling you from a person who struggles in a moment, don't look. Hashtag don't look. Matthew chapter 5 verse 28 says this. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman, but I say to you, whoever looks at a woman, impurity does not begin in the heart, impurity begins in the eyes. I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust has already committed adultery in his heart. Whoever looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery. I want you to notice something. The Pharisees, religious people, had this standard of law, God's law, the standard of God's law. And the Pharisee's standard was, as long as I don't transgress into sin, it's not sin. As long as I don't trespass, as long as I don't perform an outward movement towards adultery, it's not adultery. But Jesus came and brought us God's standard. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. It's not transgression that you need to worry about. It's the iniquity in your heart. Jesus says, if you look at a woman with lust, you've already committed the transgression. You've already committed the act of adultery. Look at the progression found in this verse. I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust has already committed adultery. Now, come here for a second. Everything I've kind of said up until this point is from a man's standpoint. It's from as if a man is the only one that struggles with lust or the pride and the lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes, impurity, immorality. But women and men struggle. I'm not going to say I don't know about equal. I'm not one. But men and women both struggle in this area the same. They may have different vehicles and different routes of getting there. One might be all the eyes and visual. One might be a romance and and, and soul things, but let me soul ties. But men and women both struggle in this area, and this is the progression of impurity, immorality, uh, and addictions out of this verse. The progression goes like this look, lust, adultery. Look, lust, adultery. Look, lust, adultery. You want to avoid adultery? Avoid looking. Avoid lusting. Don't look. I can't tell you how. Let me see the word. I want to find the right word here. How deceived a person is, that's the way to put it. I can't tell you how deceived a person is who thinks it's funny that they're window shopping a man or that they're window shopping a woman. 
I can't tell you how deceived you are to think that it's okay to look as long as you don't touch. That it's okay to shop as long as you don't purchase. I want you to look. That is the very two definitions of Pharisee and Jesus follower. A religious person would say, as long as you don't transgress, you haven't sinned. A follower of Jesus knows that if you look and you've lusted, you've already sinned. Window shopping and admiring God's handiwork. That's something I used to say as a teenager. Why would God make girls look like that? <laughs> if he didn't want us to look, we're just admiring God's handiwork. And I even heard a youth pastor say one time, guys, if you're struggling with lust, then don't take the second look. Because it won't start unless you look again or you take the second look. If you take the first look, you know, smart people like me know, well, just forget the second look and just take one long first look. You know what I mean? So it's not the first or second look. Looking empowers lust. So if you see something that is attractive to you... <laughs> Woo! You know, so much so-so. Then you need to look away. Don't look. Looking empowers lust. If you are married, let me encourage you to struggle in this area together. Don't struggle alone. Don't force your mate to struggle in this area alone. Satan works in darkness. Allow your mate to bring this struggle, this impurity, this immorality, uh, this addiction to the light. Let them bring it to you. And don't you beat them up for it. Because just because your husband might have a problem in the area of pornography or lust or immorality, it's not that he has a problem with love. It has nothing to do with whether or not he loves you. Love and lust are not the same things. Let your spouse bring it to you. You understand me? Let them talk to you and don't beat them up because it's not that they have a love problem. They have a lust problem. Come here. Potiphar's wife did not love Joseph. Potiphar's wife lusted for Joseph. Had Potiphar's wife loved Joseph, she would not have left him in prison for 13 years. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let your spouse talk to you. Bring it to the light. Have the conversation. Confess your sins one to another. If you confess to God, it says confess to God your sin and he'll forgive you. If you want to be healed, here's what the Bible says. Confess your sins one to another so that you might be healed. There's forgiveness and there's healing. And some of us haven't experienced healing because we haven't confessed and struggled with our spouse. Oh, mercy. I know this is tough stuff, but it's something I want you to know because I want you to walk in your destiny. And if your character doesn't support your destiny, you'll never walk in your destiny. Listen to me. Come here. I'm just about finished. Your spouse can deal with your lust better than your spouse can deal with your lying. Your spouse can deal with your lust better than they can deal with your lying. The number one issue in all married couples, the number one issue in all married couples that are struggling with infidelity is not the sexual immorality. It is the deception. They cannot believe they were so deceived. They've been made to feel like they were so stupid. They were been made to feel like they didn't matter enough to tell the truth. They're wondering, was anything true? If this wasn't true, is anything true? Have they? Who is this person? Who is this person living with me? Your spouse can deal with your struggle with lust better than they can deal with your struggle with lying. I'm telling you something that is the hardest thing in the world, but it will set you free. Tell your spouse the truth. They would, you, you listen, you would much rather them hear it coming from you than for them to discover it behind your back or hear it from someone else. Let me read you these verses and then I got to pray for you because some of you have probably not even watched this far. If you're still here, hit some of them thumb buttons and let me know you're still here that you didn't leave. Psalm 101 verse 3. Psalm 101 3. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. Proverbs 27 20. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are are never satisfied. Matthew chapter 6. Let me tell this thing to do something 
much later than it's trying to do it. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light is in you, if therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great a darkness it is. One more verse. Job chapter 31, verse 1. I have made a covenant with my eyes that I would not look upon a young woman. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? When Brandy and I had this conversation, it was the hardest thing I've ever done, dealing with my spouse. Uh, years ago, I come back uh, from a conference or a, um, a teaching and I just couldn't stand it anymore. I knew God had a plan and a will for my life. I felt like I was struggling in an area that I was never going to get free from. I felt like I would never experience victory in that area. And I felt like I had to talk to Brandy. And when I talked to Brandy about it, it wasn't like she didn't know. She wasn't like, oh, are you serious? Uh, your spouse probably knows you better than you think they do. It was like, you know, I, I know that. How, how can I help you? How can Brandy struggled with me? And it broke the chains that used to be on my life. Now, to say that I have never struggled in this area again would be a great deception and delusion. But it does not have its claw on me. And I have learned that whether I'm with people or alone, that if I don't look, I won't lust. And if I don't lust, I won't feed that iniquity in my heart that would cause me to want to transgress struggle together. Here's my final point. Listen to me. No matter to what degree you struggle in this area, don't give up the struggle. Don't give up the struggle. Let me pray for you. Father, right now in Jesus' name, I pray that you would invest in their soul, in their spirit, in their heart, uh, this never give up attitude. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36 says, For we have need of endurance so that after we have done the will of God, we will inherit the promises of God. Father, the eyes are the window to the soul. May our eyes be full of light. May we make a covenant with our eyes that we might not put wicked things in front of our eyes. Because once they hit our eyes, they hit our heart. And once they hit our heart, the progression has begun of looking, lusting, adulterizing, sexual impurity. Father, I pray right now that you will help us struggle together and to know we're not alone and that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are found in Christ Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen! 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 Now, I know that this is a difficult subject, but we're going to tackle the difficult subjects here at Pray First because I want you guys to know for 100% certain that you are not alone. And that sinners are welcome to follow Jesus. Unbelievers are welcome to follow Jesus. And consumers are welcome to follow Jesus. Jesus' first century disciples were all sinners. They were all unbelievers and they were all consumers. Take the first step today. Hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag shared. You guys go have a good week. Struggle together. Don't look! Don't look! Don't look. Bye, guys.